The legend has it that if you say his name three times, he's going to appear behind you. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh hey, it worked! Hello wonderful person! On that cheesy note, today we're going to be talking about Beetlejuice once again, and the recent study and recent analysis of what's been happening to it, which might have kind of actually answered a lot of questions. By the way, here is the little tiny sun in comparison to this object. And what the recent study discovered corrects our mistakes of the past. We might have been wrong about a lot of things in regards to Beetlejuice, specifically its actual size and, of course, its distance to our sun. It seems to be about 25% closer and it seems to be smaller. But more importantly, unfortunately the show has been cancelled. It's very likely not going to go supernova for at least 100,000 years or longer. So let's discuss the study, the findings and of course a lot of other details about Beetlejuice that we've discovered in the last few months. And let's begin with the name itself. Which by the way currently still doesn't really have a very good explanation. But we know that it comes from Arabic and we know that it comes from this ancient book by Abd al-Rahman al-Sufai, an ancient Persian astronomer who wrote this book back in 1964. No, sorry, 964, which is basically a thousand years before that, where he had a very detailed illustration and essentially naming and explanation of various constellations in the night skies. This was during the so-called Islamic Golden Age, which unfortunately came to an abrupt end when the Mongolian tribes invaded and essentially destroyed most of the prominent cities in the region, including Baghdad, that back then was the center of the world. At least economically, culturally and commercially. But that's of course beyond the scope of this video. The idea here is that, well, back then he drew the picture of this, which was the representation of what we know as the Orion today. Another way of seeing it is of course using the Western astrology, and here this is what the Orion looks like for us. In both the Western and Arabic um, astronomies or technically astrologies, the star right here represented the arm or the shoulder of whatever this shape was. Here's actually what Orion looks like in typical Western mythology, and essentially the bright star is his shoulder, or in this case, his hand. And it just so happens that the name written here, and specifically the name of this region right here, is Yad al-Jausa. Al-Jausa is the Arabic name for the Orion constellation, and Yad represents hand. Eventually, with time, it sort of changed into Bait al-Jausa, and because the Europeans read it differently, it became Beetle Juice. So this is essentially where, unofficially at least, the name comes from. Officially, we're still not entirely certain how all of this transformed, but we know that this is where it starts. And as you probably already know, and may have seen from other videos, the star has been giving us a lot of new mysteries to deal with in the last year or so. So this on the left here is what it looked like a year ago. Then on the right, you see what it looked like in around January of 2020. And this major change in brightness is what suddenly made this star extremely popular on the web and also created a speculation that maybe it's about to go supernova. Well, the answer to the supernova question is an almost definitive no, but the answer to the dimming and why it decreased in brightness so much still doesn't really have a very good explanation, but the new paper may have actually just explained at least some of the mysteries. So first of all, we know that Betelgeuse is an old star, it's an expanded star, and it's also a very large object. Once again, here's how it sort of compares to our own sun, at least from our previous understanding. Now, if you look at the visual observations of Betelgeuse from 2018, 2019, and then we start looking at what happened now, we'll see that there was this sudden dip right here, and also another sudden dip right here. This one obviously was not as big, but this one was really big. Both of them, however, are problematic. The first dip didn't make sense because it was just too much. We've never seen anything like this before. The second dip didn't make sense simply because it didn't happen at the right time. It wasn't really matching with what we originally anticipated. And at the same time, neither one of them had a really good explanation, or at least an explanation that would be accepted by everyone. Right now, the biggest dip is explained as either some sort of a dust cloud that passed in front of a star and blocked the very large part of the star, or another explanation, actually a much more likely explanation, would be essentially this. A very large sunspot or star spot in this case, Betelgeuse spot. This star spot would be big enough to essentially dim the star, and would be probably big enough to do this again probably sometime next year as well. 
And one of the reasons why some scientists believe it was a star spot is simply because of the observations in different frequencies coming from the star. They noticed that if this was dust, we would actually be seeing different dips in different frequencies because certain frequencies go through the dust much easier. But because all of the optical emissions were more or less the same, it only suggested that the entire star dimmed for some reason and the best explanation in this case would be a very large spot. But once again, there's really no good explanation for what happened here just yet. But the second dip that happened not so long ago does have a pretty good explanation now. The explanation presented in the paper you can find in the description below. It looks like the second event was actually caused by a very natural and very predictable pulsation of the star that is somewhat similar to, well, in some sense, an earthquake, or technically a starquake. But the reason this is interesting and the reason this is so important is because it relates to a very important study that actually started not so long ago, known as asteroseismology or astroseismology, depending on where you're from. Anyway, so the idea here is that stars, like planets, get earthquakes, starquakes. These quakes create waves on the inside and they actually cause stars and planets to sort of change and to create various effects on the surface. Now, we've learned a lot about earthquakes from planet Earth. We've also learned a lot about the sun from sunquakes, which actually stemmed from the idea of earthquakes. So by seeing what's happening here on Earth, we were able to analyze the Sun, and now by studying the Sun, we can actually analyze other stars as well. Now the video I made previously that should be popping up somewhere right there about astroseismology explains this field in a little bit more detail, but it's essentially an extremely important field in helping us understand how stars evolve, how stars act on the inside, but most importantly, it actually allows us to analyze the star and its composition, its age, and of course, its shape by studying these pulsations from starquakes and then by comparing them to what we know about our own sun. And according to the study, what we've witnessed right here is just one such pulsation. Essentially, it was something related to a kind of a starquake happening inside Betelgeuse, and the pulsation itself was caused by a tremendously large pulse wave, or essentially kind of like a sound wave that traveled across Betelgeuse changing its brightness just enough for us to witness. So in some sense, what we've witnessed is basically a really large earthquake, starquake, Betelgeuse quake happening approximately 530 light years away from us. Which, by the way, is an excellent segue into what we've discovered by studying this emission. Turns out that Betelgeuse is much closer than we originally anticipated, about 25% closer as a matter of fact. And the reason we think so is because of this analysis here. By studying the pulsations coming from Betelgeuse and by analyzing the quake itself, and also by combining all of this with decades of observation of Betelgeuse, the scientists in this paper were able to figure out the frequency of this pulsation, allowing them to see how frequent these pulsations could be, and comparing them to the theoretical astroseismology models from other stars and from other observations which also allowed them to recalculate how massive the star is, and also recalculate its total age and its total size. And the size recalculations suggested that Betelgeuse is much smaller than we initially thought. And although visually they still kind of look similar, you can see that the Betelgeuse on the left is somewhat smaller than the Betelgeuse on the right. In terms of the actual numbers, the previous value for Betelgeuse was around 887 radii of the Sun, which is around 617 million kilometers, but the new value is closer to about 764 radii of the Sun, which makes it, I guess, around 14-15% to 15 smaller. And because it's smaller in size, when we look at its total brightness, we can thus estimate the distance. I mean, technically we can even try this here, so what we're trying to do is essentially take this left Betelgeuse and move it close enough to us that it starts looking about the same in size. But here you'll notice that the other Betelgeuse is farther away, even though from this angle here they look pretty much the same. And what all of this means is that it must be closer to us in reality as well. Even though initially we thought it was about 650 to maybe even 750 light years away from us, it looks like that number is closer to about 540 to maybe 550 light years. Which, by the way, is not the first time that we've ever changed our opinion about its distance. Because when it comes to measuring distances of variable stars with variable properties, especially ones like Betelgeuse that seem to dim very unpredictably, it's somewhat difficult. Because we don't really know what the total brightness here is, 
there's really no good way for us to measure the distance to this object. But because of astro seismology and our advances in understanding of how quakes work inside stars, we now have a much better way of determining distances and other properties of these stars. But even at this distance, even though it's closer to us, if hypothetically it did go supernova right now, it would still be far enough from us to do any damage. If this was about 10 times closer to us, we would probably start worrying. But at these distances, the danger is just not there. It would make for a pretty cool show, but it wouldn't really be hazardous to planet Earth. And the other major discovery coming from this astro seismology study is that it showed that Betelgeuse is basically currently burning helium. And here is one way of trying to understand what's happening there. Right now our sun is a main sequence star and essentially it has a hydrogen burning core and the outer layer here doesn't really burn anything. Eventually our sun is going to become what's known as a red giant and this is when the hydrogen in the shell is going to start burning a little bit but the helium core that's going to start growing larger and larger in size is not going to have any reactions on the inside. Eventually the star transforms and begins burning helium as well, usually in the core, which eventually starts transforming the star and eventually burning other elements as well. But at this stage, when it's still burning helium, it still has at least 100,000 years left in it and most likely even longer depending on how much material is present there. And the reason the scientists know this is essentially by studying these quakes on the inside and learning how frequently these pulsations happen. So in a nutshell, by studying the astro seismology of Betelgeuse and by looking at decades of data coming from various telescopes, we might have solved at least one mystery of this beautiful and somewhat unusual star. We might have solved the mystery of the second most recent dimming event, but we still don't really know what happened approximately 9 months ago. We still don't know why it dimmed so much in January of 2020. Anyway, once we learn more about Betelgeuse, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.